One of the most requested videos I've had was to recreate the PlayStation 2 startup sound the way I did for the PlayStation 1 startup sound. I knew this would be a challenge because the PlayStation 2 has a lot more complex layering in the startup sequence, and recreating it by ear wouldn't yield a perfectly accurate result. With that in mind, I'm going to do my best to recreate it for the purpose of better demonstrating how the samples are layered in the sequence. For those unfamiliar with the software I'm going to use, I recommend watching the PlayStation 1 HD Remake Sound Tutorial. This goes through the basics of setting up Cakewalk and TX16WX. Getting the samples from the BIOS, once it's been extracted from the console, is easy using a program called P-Sound. I'll include a link in the description. As for extracting the BIOS from the console, it's a bit technical and beyond the scope of this video for a few different reasons. Here, in P-Sound, we open and scan the BIOS file, and we have quite a few samples. There are definitely more here than in the PlayStation 1 BIOS. In fact, I'm not sure where in the system some of these are even used. In Cakewalk, let's add TX16WX to our project and begin loading our samples into the sampler plugin. We won't load all the samples we extracted from the BIOS, just the ones that are used in the startup sequence. For each one, we create a separate MIDI channel and add a new program to each one. After creating a program in the channel, we use the File Browser tab to drag our samples into the keyboard area of the plugin and expand the sample's keyboard range to cover the entire keyboard. The process is the same for each sample we import. Create a channel slot. Now we drag in the sample. And we'll see how that sounds. We want to set our scale from fixed to normal. Add a channel slot and add a program to that. Now we bring in the sample, expand it to fill the keyboard. Let's check that. And we add a channel slot. And now for our next sample, and expand it to fill the keyboard. Let's check that. We want to change our scale from fixed to normal. Add a channel slot. Then we drag in our next sample. And set our scale to normal. Play a few notes. Add a channel slot. Let's drag in the next one. Set the scale to normal. And add our channel slot and program. And the next sample. And stretch it to fill the keyboard. Drag in the next. And fill the keyboard. And set our scale to normal. Play a few notes of it.
at our channel slot. And now for our next sample. And we change our scale from fixed to normal. Okay, let's see how that sounds. For some of the samples, specifically the white noise and ocean sounds, we want to adjust the attack and release settings to be gradual. I'd say a couple seconds on each. This will cause the sound to fade in and out slowly on key press and release, as opposed to be abrupt. On the other sounds, we don't need to do this. And we set the attack to about two seconds or so. And we set the release. Now we adjust the attack. And we adjust the attack. And we set the release. Let me adjust the attack to a couple seconds or more. And we adjust the attack. Set the release to a couple seconds as well. Additionally, on the sounds that fade in and out softly by adjusting the attack and release, I assigned the audio outputs on the plugin to a separate audio channel so that I could add reverb. This step might not be necessary, but it does make it sound a little better. We set the output to the one with the reverb. Change this output. Change the output to the one with the reverb. Add a MIDI track and set it to the corresponding MIDI channel in the synth. We add our next MIDI track and set it to the corresponding MIDI channel in the synth. And we set our final MIDI channel and set it to the corresponding MIDI channel in the synth. I had to play this by ear since there isn't any way to extract and decode the actual sequence file from the BIOS. Only the audio samples, unfortunately. As a result, my remake is not going to be completely accurate. Now the first thing I noticed is that the frequency at which some of the samples are played back in the startup is slightly detuned, so my remake will be slightly out of tune even if I managed to guess the right notes. Just about a half second before the loud piano smashing sound begins, the eerie first sample in the batch is played. From what I could tell, it's very subtle in the startup, it's played as a B. Most of the samples are actually chords and not single notes, so when I say note, I mean the note that I play on the synth that sounds about right. 
I'm sure I'll get some of these wrong, so just be forewarned of that. Then we have our piano smash sound. So relaxing! <laughs> Nothing like dropping an old piano from a crane to easy old nerves on a Saturday afternoon. Anyway, I played this as a D and G. Sounds close, but not perfect. Then we have the white noise sample, with the attack and release adjusted to smooth out the start and stop. It's just white noise and not any kind of tone, so I layered it by playing an A4, D5, and G5. If there's a game disc in the machine, we play that tone at C6. This is the one tone I'm confident was played at the correct frequency. It is a very chewy sound. If there is no game disc in the machine, we get the configuration menu sound. This was just about the hardest to guess, and I went with a C5. After that, we get a nice, ongoing combination of the ocean and white noise samples, of which there are several. They're smoothed out appropriately by adjusting the attack and release. I just played some notes around middle C intermittently to approximate it. Again, we're not going for a 100% accurate remake here. If you follow these steps, you might be able to do a better job if you tinker with all of this a little bit more than I did. It's not a perfect remake because there are a lot of subtle details that I just can't pick up simply by listening to the startup. Still, this is a demonstration of how the samples are layered and put together to create the startup sound. Thanks for watching!